Now, tonight's international games are not the only football taking place tonight. And there's an extraordinary story in the National League South involving Truro City, who face playing their final 12 league games in just one month. We can speak to their manager, the former Southampton Plymouth, uh, as well, defender Paul Watton. There he is, uh, Paul. Uh, right, uh, welcome. Um, you're sitting down. I'm glad about that because this is going to be busy for you, isn't it? Uh, how on earth has this oh, happened? Definitely. Well, it's just an um, <clears throat> unprecedented situation. It's, um, you know, we've, we, uh, our, our new ground is, is getting built in Truro as we speak, which won't be ready until um, the start of next season. So we had to ground share in, in Plymouth with Plymouth Parkway. Um, we haven't played there since uh, early January. Um, the weather the weather was bad and, and the pitch um, couldn't handle the weather. So we had a multitude of games called off. We then uh, we then decided to ground share with Taunton um, so we could get our games in, obviously. Uh, and the weather, again, has just been, it's been just non-stop rain. It's been terrible. Um, couldn't get a game on at Taunton, so you know we, we had to we had to fill our fixtures, and the, the only ground um, that fitted the ground grading and that and that was an astroturf pitch that we could guarantee the games being on was was Gloucester. Um, so, like you said, we've got twelve games in twenty five days. Ten of them are at home, which is Gloucester, which is a six hour commute for us. Um, and then we played last Tuesday night at Gloucester and the game had to get abandoned because, unfortunately, one of the Eastbourne players got injured. So you can't make it up, really. It's just been, um, it's, it's been a horrendous situation. Yeah, I'm just wondering how many cats you've run over and, uh, or walked under ladders or, or something. There's something going on. Oh, my goodness. They, they don't call you lucky for nothing, do you? These are your remaining games. Um, right, they, as you can see, there's, there's, there's plenty of Tuesday... Thursday, Saturdays in there, which is just tough, yeah. especially you're not you're not full time there. So these these players are going to have to take what time off work. This is really tricky, isn't it? Oh, it's 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 going to be um, it's going to be a really tough situation. As you quite rightly say, the players, you know, they're going to have to take a half day um, to get to the games. There's lots of players who will be uh, getting, to the, getting to the ground later than they would normally get to as well to make the fixture. Um, I mean, you know, you just, it's actually, <laughs> it's even worse when you look at it there like that. It's, when you actually look at it, it's horrifying, really. So we can only take it game by game and, you know, see who's fit for each game and get as many points as we can. It's, um, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a situation that I've never been involved with um, and I'm sure I'll never be involved with again. So we're just going to have to... Um, Game by game is the only way we can do it. Now, what you're saying is, is you're actually playing almost 200 miles away uh, from your home ground. Uh, yeah. Tonight, your opponents are Dartford, who actually have a shorter journey to Gloucester than yourselves do, which is yeah. just mind-boggling, isn't it? Rob, it's crazy. It's, I mean, everything's stacked against us. And, it, you know, it's... Um, it, like, you quite rightly say... Everything's got everything that can go wrong has gone wrong, um, which is out of our control. You know, the club have worked really closely with the National League and worked really hard. Um, and we've guaranteed our games being on at Gloucester. And then last Tuesday, the game gets abandoned because one of the Eastbourne players gets injured, unfortunately. So it's, it's unprecedented and, you know, unforeseen as well. But um, we've got 12 games to go and it's, you know, we're saying we're at home to Dartford tonight. We've got 12 away games left. It's, um, you know, but the new, the light at the end of the tunnel is the new grounds being built and, um, you know, back in Truro for next season. So we've just got to dig in and, and get through as best we can this season. Yeah, because the fact 10 of your, your remaining 12 games are at home is, isn't really much comfort, is it? Because they, they, they are <laughs> effectively away games. Yeah, they are away games. It's, you know, the, the boys will be getting home. A lot of my boys are Plymouth-based. Um, and they won't be getting home till half one uh, tomorrow morning. Some of them are up at work at six. But, um, you know, it's not it's not the way we we saw it happening, uh, gaining promotion last season into the, back into the National League system. Um, and it's, it, it's a saying that... I, I just say it about 10 times a day. It is what it is. It, there's... There's no other way of dealing with it. We've got to take it game by game. If you look too far ahead, I think you can get a bit 
bit caught up in it and a bit snowballed by it all. It's, um, you know, the, the enormity of it, really. But um, starting tonight, we'll, we'll see how we go. And obviously, we need the points as well. Yeah, you do. Because if, if we look at the table, uh, you're 19th, two points above the relegation zone. The good news is, or is it the bad news? You have five games in hand. Um, so there, there is the possibility of you pulling away. You, you, you talked about getting promoted last year. You voted via the playoffs, weren't you, into the National League South? Was yeah. the target always this season just to stay up and therefore are you, you're almost on track? Yeah, I think the target for us this year was, was definitely survival. Um, I think that's the first port of call when, when you're a promoted, promoted team. Um, the league's very tough. As you, as you quite rightly say, we're, we're part-time. There's, I think, it's eight or nine full-time teams in the league now. Um, there's a lot of top, top players and top, top teams. So it's, um, it's difficult. And if, if we do achieve survival this year, it'll be a, a huge achievement by everyone involved with the football club. Yeah. I remember watching your career closely. We used to do the Goals Express on a Saturday night. When your name came up, I always... Uh, you scored a lot of goals, actually, considering where you played on the pitch. But, but when you were a player, did you ever dream that management was going to be quite like this? Uh, definitely, definitely not. Definitely not. It's, um, it's very challenging. Um, you know, I've got to say, the, the players have been magnificent through it. They haven't, they haven't moaned. They've got every right to moan. And, and they've got lots of ready-made excuses, but uh, they haven't used them as yet. They've been great. Um, it is very challenging. Um, but like I say, I'm sure, I'm sure this will never happen to me again um, and I'm sure it won't happen um, to many other teams it's just um, beyond our control really but as I say everyone's doing everything they can possibly to to make the best of a, a really bad situation just because I've got a vested interest in this Paul um, yeah how do you pronounce your surname Watton quite right too uh, there you go, from Rob Watton to Paul Watton. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Thank you.